welcome. You're watching Head to Head with UATV. I'm Antonina Antosha. Previous week, the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine has terminated the program of economic cooperation between Ukraine and Russia that was established for 2011-2020. The statement issued by Ukrainian Economic Development and Trade Ministry points to Russia being engaged in trade and transit aggression against Ukraine and to systematical measures taken by Russian side that contradict the program's goals. What are the new Ukrainian goals for international economic cooperation and how will Ukraine fulfill them? To discuss this, we're joined in the studio today by Pavlo Kuchta. He is the deputy head of Strategic Advisory Group for Supporting Ukrainian Reform. Hello, Pavlo, and thank you Hello. for joining us. Thank you. So since the Cabinet of Ministers terminated the cooperation with Russia, what is Ukraine left with? How do we change it, interchange it with something? Well, we should understand that this program that was terminated. Mm -hmm. uh, for one, it was defunct. It didn't work at least since 2014, since the Russian aggression started, so it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. and, so basically we didn't lose that much. <laughs> we didn't lose anything, right? right. It's more, uh, this is more of a symbolic move. Also, it wasn't really that precise, or it wasn't like the EU Association Agreement, for example, which is very precise, Clearly. very detailed and very clear. It was more of a declaration, mm -hmm. but uh, an interesting fact is that this declaration was essentially more or less the same as the EU association, kind of broadly speaking. So uh, no trade barriers, uh, kind of um, harmonization of legislation mm -hmm. between Russia and Ukraine, etc., etc. Kind of an, a declaration of integration of Ukraine into the Russian economic and maybe even political space. So it, it, it was kind of pointing in that direction. It was very imprecise. It's only, I think, three or four pages. You know what? It sounds like Russia tried to play ahead and take Ukraine to itself before Ukraine could actually join the EU with signing this Essen very cooperation Essentially, agreement. yes. This was signed in 2011, I think, and it was essentially a kind of part of the Russian attempt to mm -hmm. foil Ukraine in its direction, mm -hmm. kind of what was mm -hmm. happening under the Yanukovych regime when Russia was trying to pull Ukraine uh, into its uh, its uh, space, yeah. kind of economic space, political space, and away from Europe. And Ukraine chose the different route, so it's rather obvious that the government cancelled this. So, however you look at it, mm -hmm. it, 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 did, it wasn't logical even to have this document. All right, right now, how does Ukraine uh, work on improving the economic cooperation routes or skills? Are we getting engaged with any other countries, not saying from Europe, like for example, the United States? Well, uh, of course, we have uh, the e EU and the EU that's, market yeah, as the main already, direction of integration, yeah. obviously. And it is the largest market in the world right at our border, right? So it's uh, it's a no-brainer to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, Ukraine, yes, we are signing bilateral trade agreements, a free trade agreement with Canada. Recently, we've signed uh, an agreement with Israel. So, uh, I mean, the relations are developing. Obviously, the anomaly, maybe from a purely economical point of view, is a, a bad uh, relationship relations with Russia, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a big market again right at our door, but we are having better. But this is political and this is dictated from Russia by their aggression, by uh, the fact that they're trying to stop Ukraine's integration into the West, etc. Mm -hmm. Coming back to the uh, association agreement with the uh, European Union, now that Ukraine has it, the export market has largely extended. Is it going to grow? Even yes, it, it is. It is already growing. Every year it's growing. The share uh, of EU uh, in Ukrainian external trade and Ukrainian export is growing mm -hmm. uh, quite fast. The amount of comp Ukrainian companies that are working in that market is growing. Uh, and uh, this is a structural trend, so definitely it will be growing. Does it mean that the um, quality of the products uh, produced in Ukraine for Ukrainians is going to get better as well? Uh, yes, it's, uh, the interesting fact is that uh, once those producers have to comply with all European regulations, exactly. uh, also they have to compete on the very competitive market, very demanding, mm -hmm. obviously uh, the quality of their product products will have to rise. Uh, and this means that uh, what they, went, they will be selling essentially this more or less the same here. So the quality of products for Ukrainians will of course rise as well. Okay, that's great news. <laughs> that's good news, yeah. <laughs> All right, what about the um, investment climate in Ukraine? How would you evaluate it? Again, this is, uh, this is the, probably the most critical area mm -hmm. uh, here, the uh, kind of the root of economic problems, or uh, the source of economic problems in this country. Uh, as almost all of the reforms that have been done since 2014 are essentially one way or the other 
at least partially aimed at improving the business climate. Even the efforts at anti-corruption or police reform, they mm -hmm. have an impact on the mm -hmm. business climate, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, of bad, uh, bad attitude from the law enforcement agencies towards business and kind of bad blood there. Does it mean that when the reforms are fully implemented, the uh, climate... Yes, essentially the climate, it's the same. The You're, investment climate is going to be wonderful. Uh, well, <laughs> and we have, if, we if the reforms people are... People sitting in line wanting to invest in Ukraine. Uh, if the reforms are fully implemented, yes, I think we can expect uh, that there will be a line of investors to Ukraine. Unfortunately, we're still uh, not, not there. There's still quite a lot we have to do before that happens. Okay, speaking of Ukrainian economy, uh, there is a tendency that migrant workers from Ukraine tend to send more money and tend to uh, imburse more money into the Ukrainian economy than the foreign investors. Is this true? It is. Unfortunately, Why it is it true happen? at this point. Uh, it happens uh, partly because the investment climate is bad. So it's an anomaly in a way, right? We're essentially, this means we have a... A labor force that is good enough, qualified enough, and numerous enough to uh, generate like the almost 10 billion dollars of mm -hmm. these remittances, mm -hmm. 9.3 mm -hmm. billion dollars last year. Uh, it's, a huge it's a huge sum. That's like 10 percent of our GDP. Uh, right. So a huge amount of people qualified. They can go to Europe. They can go to Poland. They find work there. Uh, they are employed, but mm -hmm. somehow they do not get employed here. So. Somehow where they're available, the, but uh, no one invests. Where is this in, trick? Why is, can't those people get a job in Ukraine, on Ukrainian again, territory? Again, this depends on the investment climate. This depends on uh, the ability of Ukraine to attract these investments, to create an environment where investors thrive, where they come in, where, where they would be interested in coming here. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they will create the jobs uh, necessary to accommodate all this labor force. Can't the government uh, create this, the state? Uh, you mean the jobs? Yeah. Uh, well, that would probably be the worst idea <laughs> ever. Why? And, uh, the, oh, why well, uh, uh, fortunately, if in this case, I would say it's even fortunate we have a large enough amount of debt to preclude the government from doing that. But if, mm -hmm. in theory, the government did that, what would happen would be people employed in unproductive jobs, possibly huge corruption along the way, uh, then huge pile of debt created in the process and zero productivity and zero zero stuff Income. to show for, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, well, uh, this is this is not the way how it works. The private sector should create jobs and the government uh -huh. should create an environment okay. for the private sector to be able to create good and productive jobs. But then again, we're coming back to the necessity of having a, uh, a good uh, investment climate. Again, good so environment. The, yeah, right? so the private something... sector would want to create jobs. Exactly, exactly. And this is not this is not something. This is not rocket science. This is not something new. Something you know outrageously complex. This is simply uh, creating a normal, uh, a normal rule of law. Mm -hmm. Normal environment for businesses to operate where, uh, you know, I know, prosecutor's office doesn't come to them, take away all their yeah. documents and then sit on them find for them. six <laughs> months, find them, yeah, uh, no, 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 no stupid stuff, reasonably moderate tax rates. Uh, you know, no corporate trading, just, just, just what you have across the border. I know in Slovakia, in Poland, just, just okay, your normal, regular investment. This is so planet. easy because it sounds easy when you explain it. If this is so easy, what should Ukrainian government do to achieve that? Well, this requires a... Uh, actually, a lot of things are being done, right, right now. So, uh, there were uh, new legislation enacted against this, exactly the kind of raiding by law enforcement mm -hmm, agencies. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the law enforcement agencies uh, partly awaited that, and still we had, we had bad cases recently of, of them coming to mm -hmm. investors. But, uh, I mean, the problem is acute, and everyone understands that there's, there's a whole bunch of proposals on the table. Obviously, this means reform of tax authority, reform of law enforcement agencies, you know, uh, simply punishing, punishing them when they do something bad to business. Mm -hmm. This means working a lot with... So, essentially, it boils down to the relations between this state and the private sector. Since the government, uh -huh. the state, was unreformed, starting from the 1990s, it essentially re retained its Soviet characteristics, which, which, one of which was animosity to any kind of private mm -hmm. activity. So it, it, it still retains them, right? And the reforms are essentially aimed at making it uh, business friendly, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so having all of them, all of the participants there on the government side, think of business as something that they need to nurture Right, that they need to develop, and they, they need uh, that provides resources for them, and upon which they then 
lift. So it's a, it, it requires a certain change of mentality. It requires a certain set of reforms. Some of them have been already done. So deregulation, a lot has been done, right? Uh, it requires simply uh, narrowing the scope of what the government does, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if we can avoid doing something, uh, then why do it, right? If, if we do not really need the government to be in some regula regulating something, you know, gathering some taxes, doing some activity, then get, just get it out of there, right? Concentrate on core functions of the government and mm -hmm. concentrate on doing them well. And then it, then it would work. Also, we have some really, uh, well, simply mm, non, non unworkable things like no land market, for example, right? The, the simply a ban on selling and buying agricultural land. Oh, there was a reason for that. Uh, well, there is no, no rational reason for that. So okay. it's, <laughs> in fact, it's, it's, it's simply, in Ukrainian conditions, this is simply stupid. So this, this, this is one thing that could actually, uh, on itself, simply raising it could already attract foreign mm -hmm. investment, could already open up investment uh, and, and, and let, let money come to Ukraine. So this is, this is a no-brainer. It should be done as fast as possible. Well, the, the, the way you explain it, the way you describe it, it sounds very easy. Hopefully our government and our public sector come together and work these issues all out. In the meantime, thank you so much for coming thank and sharing you. this information. That was Pavel Kuchta. He is a deputy head of strategic advisory group for supporting Ukrainian reform. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV.